Good evening and welcome to the Power Hour of Prayer. I am your host, Pastor Ren Shuffman from Freedom Fellowship Church. And with me tonight is my wife, Pastor Rachel Shuffman. Hey guys, we're so glad you could join us for a miracle tonight. We're going to have a powerful time in the Lord. Do me a favor as you're jumping on here real quick. Shout out where you're watching from. Shout out, say hello and, and tell us where you're watching from. Hey, Nicole from Canada. We got people from watching all over the country. Tulsa. Uh, we got Ukraine in the house. Awesome. UK is in here. Oklahoma, Hawaii. Uh, oh, that's just a high. Where are you from? Indiana. Uh, guys, just keep shouting out and sharing out. Uh, Australia is in the house. We're so excited. Go ahead and share this live stream out right now. Make a public post real quick and share the live stream out as a public post on your page so that we can reach more people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are going to impact nations tonight. So I'm so excited that the broadcast just seems to be growing and reaching and we're seeing more and more healings. We're seeing more and more people uh, delivered, set free, out of bondage, out of captivity and into the loving hands of a loving savior. And so we're excited to see what God is doing in people's lives. Prophetic words, uh, bodies being restored. We had, we had a bunch of healings happen uh, last night as we prayed at the very end. Uh, I prayed for a pinky and I made a post on my page. You can go read that. Uh, Pastor Chris saw a kidney that needed to be healed. And then I saw a pinky and it ended up being the same exact person. Their kidney and their pinky was fully restored last night, full functioning order. So we're just seeing so many divine encounters with a loving God. And so go ahead guys and hit the share button real quick, share out the broadcast so that we can reach as many people as possible, because I promise something's going to happen tonight. God is going to show up and do mighty things in this place. Amen. So if you believe that and you're ready to receive that, then sow a seed of sharing. Okay. So when you share that broadcast, what you're saying is I expect something to happen tonight for me. And I want there to be witnesses for what God does. Amen. So share it out and we're going to get started here tonight. I'm so excited uh, to, to bring on uh, a powerful man of God here in just a second. I'm going to bring him on. Uh, and uh, But I want to uh, bring up what we're doing here first. Uh, you know, you guys, you know, if you love the ministry, you can send these little stars. If you're on the Freedom Fellowship page, you can hit the star button. Uh, do hearts, do thumbs up, but there's also a little star option there. And when you send 25 stars, it actually gives the ministry 25 cents. And a lot of times Facebook actually gives them away to you for free. I think even our YouTube channel uh, has them on there uh, as well. So they're like, if Facebook gives you a hundred of those for free, send it. That's a dollar that it supports the ministry and it didn't cost you anything. And if you want to find out more about how to be a part of our ministry tonight, we're going to have a powerful session, but we also have exclusive ministry opportunities and, and other classes available to you that we make available on a very intimate scale. And you can do that by joining our partners program. So FFC, dot church slash partners, you can join our partners program and learn more about how you can have uh, more intimate encounters and more intimate access to training and equipping. And if you do that tonight, I'm going to send you Dale Mass book. He'll be with us tomorrow on Thursday. Dale Mass will be with us, with us tomorrow prophesying over you. Uh, and David perceived you as king. If you join the partners program tonight, uh, I'll send you that book as a thank you uh, so that you can be blessed tonight. Amen. So as a lot of you guys know, we have our Oklahoma Supernatural Intensive coming up. It's it's uh, July 5th through the 11th. It's an in-person conference that you can also join online, okay? So you can also watch by online if you can't be here in person. But one of those people that's going to be here training and equipping us is going to be the gentleman I'm introducing tonight. Ken Fish is going to be uh, at the conference training and equipping you guys. So I want you guys to say hello to Ken Fish tonight. So let's bring him on. Bring him on. Hang on, let me get your volume. Hey, Ken, how you doing tonight? I'm all right. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great, sir. Good, just checking. I am glad you got your internet fixed in time. Yeah, well, it wasn't really my doing, but it was, uh, I was kind of on tender hooks there for a bit. I'm, I am glad it got fixed though. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Los Angeles, you can't count a lot out there in the country in Los Angeles, you know, way in the boondocks of Los Angeles. What do you Well, you know, do? they sent me the first uh, update and they said your internet will be restored at uh, 5.56 p.m. And I thought, how can they know it that precisely? But OK, that's only four <laughs> minutes before showtime. And then they sent another one that said 
uh, 6.57 p.m., but then they got it fixed before 6.57, and so here we are. I'm, well, I'm glad that you can make it on here. Why? <laughs> I'm glad that you can make it on here. We're very excited. So, guys, do me a favor. Hit the share button real quick. Share out this broadcast, Ken Fish. So, Ken, for the people on here that don't know who you are, can you give a little bit of background and just tell them kind of real quick who you are, where you've been, um, what you've been doing? I am a raconteur. Um <laughs> A troubadour, a busker. No, I'm I'm none of the above. I if you uh, wish to opine, just go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Everyone's so like, I don't know see. what they're saying. <laughs> I <laughs> I'm the leader of uh, of Orbis Ministries, which was formerly known as Kingdom Fire Ministries. Uh, we're based in Los Angeles, where I have been, um, you know, locked in for the last four months. Uh, but. Um, things are starting to open up. So tomorrow I'm going to Florida and I'm leading meetings in Orlando. Oh, that's hey, great. Chris, yeah, Florida, how are you? Open. Yeah. Hey, Chris, we love you. Uh, so yeah, so that's great. I mean, everything's starting to open back up. You know, we have the conference coming up, the OSI conference, which, you know, basically is uh, just a one week version of what Global Supernatural uh, Ministry School does as their GSI program, which is going on right now. So it's this heavy duty equipping where you can learn how to walk in the gifts of the spirit, be fully uh, uh, released into your authority and calling in Christ. Like it's an amazing training program. And so I'm so excited that you're going to be here to be a part of that. And do you have any idea yet wh where, where, what you're going to be teaching on during no, that? No, in fact, um, Brian Blount, who kind of pulled all of it together, he asked me to speak and he said, you know, you can do what you want. And I was like, thanks. Uh, what would you like me to do? And, you know, he said, let's catch up. And he and I have missed each other three times now. So I don't yet know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, you're going to, you're going to be in my building. So we're going to figure that out tonight. Okay. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, it's uh, likely it's going to be some sort of a revival theme or maybe uh, healing or deliverance, but I don't know. I get asked to speak on a lot of things. So I know that we talked about deliverance for sure, about bringing you in to talk on deliverance for sure. You know, I think a lot of people get scared over the subject of deliverance. They do. I agree yeah. with that. They yeah. get really nervous. They're thinking like exorcist or something like that. And it's really nothing like that, really. I mean, uh, it, it can have elements, but not just in general. Um, That's right. Right. And, and so, you know, I think that that's a great topic there, obviously, as well. And revival, I think, is important because there's a lot of great moves of God that fizzle out and fade out very quickly. And you were you were with John Wimber for some years. That's um, right. So you've seen. Years. Yeah. So you've seen revival and it continuing for some period. You've seen movements of God that sweep through uh, and right. and are maintainable and sustainable. Uh, that's right. And, and so, you know, I mean, t t t t tell me something like for, for people on here, they're going, okay, I'm not sure who Ken is, or, you know, I've heard of John Wimber, but like, tell us something like when you were in that season, tell, tell me some story of just something crazy, radical, awesome that God did that will just encourage everyone tonight. Cause I believe it's about to happen again. I believe there's going to be a greater outpouring. So I just want to go, Hey, this is what used to happen. And now what's going to happen is going to be bigger. You know, there are many stories, um, that I have from that period. And we could probably sit here all night and tell stories of, of things that happened. But um, one of the more maybe dramatic ones was there was a young woman in our church. Well, at that time we were all young. We were all under 30. And uh, John used to say that the vineyard was just a big youth group. But anyway, um, there was this young woman, very, very, very attractive beach blonde, you know, Newport beach kind of woman. Um, she would never date anybody it turned out, you know, if we were all kind of friends and eventually it came out that, uh, part of why she wouldn't date anyone was she was born without ovaries and she couldn't have children therefore. And so who would want me? So she just refused to date. Well, eventually one of the guys in the church managed to persuade her to go out and they, they ended up getting married. And one night we were in church and uh, John just, he said, all right, let's all stand. The Holy Spirit's here. You know, he's going to heal. It was, it was a very generic, nonspecific word. I mean, compared with a lot of things that we do nowadays, you would have gone, meh. But anyway, he, he gave this word and, uh, you know, she stood up and a bunch of us that were close by her, you know, put our hands on her to lay, to pray for her. And she started vibrating intensely and began to sweat. And she sweated right through her clothes. I mean, she was absolutely soaked. She looked like she'd stepped in a, in a shower. But anyway, she was vibrating and soaking through with sweat. And when the, the vibration stopped, the power lifted off of her. She said, um, I feel like I'm 
fatter somehow. And she's kind of, you know, touching her midsection like this. And well, you can't really see me, but anyway, uh, you get the idea. So she's kind of touching her midsection. And uh, anyway, so she went to the doctor not long after that. I don't think she went specifically to check it out. It just happened that she went to the doctor and they scanned her. And what do you know? She had two ovaries and today she's a grandmother. So uh, that's, that's a wow. pretty dramatic story, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, no ovaries and grew. Oh, that's kind of like uh, Brian Blount tells a story about the kidney that regrew, you know, yeah. from nothing. And they caught it as a seedling on that. And that, that's just amazing. Cause I think a lot of times we limit God on what he's capable of doing. We think he can kind of repair something, but he can't just regrow something. So okay. that's come on. That's, that's amazing. You know, um, there's one place in the Bible on, it's in Matthew nine, but most of the modern translations don't render it this way. The King James does. And it says Jesus healed the maimed. And then we know of course, that when Malchus's ear was severed, the servant of the high priest in the garden of uh, Gethsemane, that Jesus just reached down and picked it up and reattached it. So it's not out of the realm to be talking of things that regrow or reattach or limbs that grow. We don't see it very often, but I, I often wonder if that's just because, as Jesus often said to his disciples, because of the littleness of our faith. I mean, it doesn't sound very nice. It's not, you know, all warm and cushy, but but he often rebuked his own disciples for not having faith. And I'm always challenged by that because I've seen times where the issue appears to be, well, at this moment, my lack of faith, but sometimes it's, you know, others that I'm observing and how they're praying and conducting themselves. We don't, we just don't like to talk about that, but, and I want to be clear, this isn't, this is not that the person getting prayer doesn't have faith. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. This is that the prayer does not have faith. Yeah. And well, that's, uh, that's a good push. distinction. Stop yeah. on that for a second, because that's a really good distinction. You know, you and I, uh, Brian, you know, a lot of us, the culture, the culture shifted. You know, you got guys like Todd White and everything where this culture shifted, where we're going out and praying for people just in our everyday lives. You know, people at the restaurant and people at the bank and every, a grocery store, everywhere we go. And we encounter atheists all the time. We pray for them and they get healed. They right. have zero faith and they get healed. So that old argument that, well, how come I didn't get healed? Oh, well, because you don't have enough faith and you go, you have this mentality now that God didn't heal me because I'm a faithless person. And it's, and it's a false narrative. And, and you hit it right there on the hill where you said, it's not the other person's faith. You know, it's the person that's doing the stepping out. That's, that's uh, lacking in faith. Jesus, when they said, why can't we cast out this demon? He didn't say, well, because the person that was demonized doesn't have any faith. Or the dad didn't have faith, right? right. Or the boy was, I don't know, whatever. He was not into it. No, that, that's exactly right. I've actually had times where people have, as I, I like to say, they got healed against their will. Um, <laughs> I, I had one time I was in Western Australia and I was preaching and there was a guy sitting there in in the, you know, in the uh, sanctuary at church, the, the meeting room. And uh, he was he was kind of up against a pillar, but he had this sort of camp and sort of like that with his neck and his head and it seemed fairly clear to me that he probably had cervical dystonia but anyway i i could see that the lord was about to heal him i could see the power of god was coming on him and i said um sir the 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 power of the lord's on you stand to your feet and he goes oh, i'm baptist i don't believe in any of this <laughs> and i said well you may not believe in any of this but but god is healing you and you should stand up because god's about to heal you now and he goes, no, you don't understand. I'm Baptist. I don't believe in this. And I said, sir, the Lord is healing you right now. Stand up. And he goes, no, I'm Baptist. I'm not doing it. And so I, I thought, well, you know, this is getting a little bit amped up. So I, I kind of backed off. But anyway, the, sp the spirit of God came on him and, you know, he's all kind of torqued in his neck. Pretty soon his head kind of turned. And I said, well, how does your neck feel? And he goes, I still don't believe it. I'm Baptist. I don't believe in this. So I said, Come up here. So he gets out of his chair and he's coming up towards the front. And as he comes towards the front, he doesn't even make it all the way. And the spirit of God just bang hits him like a thunderbolt. And he just boom falls to the ground and he's lying there. And while he's finishing being healed, he's, he's yelling out, I'm Baptist. I don't believe in this. So I mean, I don't think you want to use that as your go-to model of how healing works, but but I, I think this this thing that we've kind of beat into the ground that you didn't get healed because you don't have faith. There are enough stories around that that at least open the possibility that there's more to it than do you have faith. I mean, I think it is. I think that's part of it. I definitely think it's part of it, but it's definitely not all of it.
No, no. You know, and, and there's obviously stories that says your faith made you whole. So there you can add faith in that, that can bring healing, but I don't think you can go negative. I don't think you can get past zero. So I don't, I don't think you can have negative faith that keeps God from moving. He's going to heal you or you can impress him with your faith. Like th there's a moment there. So like, you know, when people, that, that's why one of the reasons um, w when I'm praying for people for healing, one, one of the things that I do that I think is very important is the first thing I tell people is don't pray with me. Just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift and do me a favor. Stop trying to help me. Stop trying to beg God. I'm praying for you. Let me pray for you. You're a son, you're a daughter, and you don't need to beg him. So don't pray with me. Just let me pray. And there, are, I can't tell you how many times I've seen where people are trying to pray with me, right? You know, they're being in agreement with me. I understand that they're trying to be in agreement with me, but I'm like, no, I have a whole team in agreement with me. Just let me pray for you and you receive. And when they stop praying with me, they actually receive it right then. They just, when they just realize like, Hey, God wants to bless you. You don't need to beg him for what he's already giving you. Just like the Baptist, right? He's like, well, I don't believe in it. And it's like, well, sorry, he's giving it to you anyways. You can put yep. the pie in your mouth or get it in the face, but one way or another, you're getting the pie, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so open and how wide. You like getting healed against your will anyway. <laughs> I, I'm actually one of those, Ken, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm one of those. Um, I had two torn discs in my neck from an injury. They were torn. I had the discogram, the MRI, the whole thing. I went to the judge. I was, uh, you know, it was a workman's comp thing and people would come and try to pray for me. And I'd go, no, 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 no. Don't you pray for me. Don't you pray for me. Why? I said, let me finish my court case first. <laughs> I've gone through a year of suffering in pain yeah. and can't pick my head up. And then I'm going to get healed and get nothing for it when I get to the court. So as soon as the doctor stuff was over, I'm like, okay, you guys can pray for me now. I was one of those. I didn't want you to pray for me because I didn't want to lose out on that court case. And, you know, and so I'm, I'm one of those, I, I'm legally on paper, 30% disabled because of two torn discs in my neck. That's medically validated and I can do anything. Have you There's, had them checked? Are they fully healed or are you fully healed. officially injured, but you're nevertheless okay? I've never gone to the doctor and gotten that official removal, but I have had um, uh, x-rays and things like that done. And they're like, we don't see any damage. Right. Every time they're like, There's a little calcium buildup on your neck there. And, they're, and I'm like, well, is there any torn disc? We don't see any damage. So yeah, th so there's no damage in my neck. I was never supposed to lift 10 pounds above my head for the rest of my life. They wanted to do a spinal fusion on me and fuse my neck together. Uh, and this is, you know, 12 years ago, 14 years ago, something like that now, and fuse my neck together. Um, and, and I told them, nope, that's all right. And so God healed me of that. And I've never had another problem again. I mean, I wrestle, I do MMA, I get put in chokeholds. I don't have neck problems. Wow. Yeah. So God heals guys. So that, that's pretty powerful. God heals. He delivers. He sets free. So go ahead, step into some of that, like what you've seen and, and maybe may, like, I feel like there's a little bit of a teaching atmosphere here that you could lean into that a little bit about well, what you know, you've I seen. Gonna, I was just going to tell a story. Um, go for it. I, I say I'm watching the stream of people on here and there are a few on here. Uh, hi, Jane Kim from Chicago. Hi, Meg Lapu. Um, a couple people from Australia that I know. Uh, I don't know if they knew I was going to be on here or they follow you anyway. I'm not really sure. But anyway, some of them I'm kind might, of a big deal. Depending on where where we've you know crossed paths, they might have heard me tell this story. But there was a uh, there was a guy that came to one of my meetings about probably five years ago now. And um, I had just returned from a trip to Australia, and he was uh, he was a pastor who had MS, and he was unable to walk well. He had he could use a, a crutch, and I would say with great difficulty he could walk. Uh, he was paralyzed on his left side, and he also had uh, his vision impaired from the multiple sclerosis as well. But it was an unusual uh, blindness pattern. Normally, if you say someone's three quarters blind, you think they're not seeing 75% of the light. But in his case, if you think of a watch face, he couldn't see from 12 around to nine. Okay. But from nine to 12, he could see. So, you know, the way I'm looking at it would be kind of over here, he could see, but nothing in here. So anyway, this guy's obviously not in a good way. And uh, so he comes forward, he gets prayed for, and it turned out that he had a spirit. We got rid of the spirit and then he was instantaneously healed and he jumps up and he puts his hands in the air, which he couldn't do. 
and he begins running around the room saying, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Well, he later goes to his hospital, which was a major hospital in the DC area. It's one of the five major research hospitals in the United States, top five. And uh, he goes to his neurologist who's been treating him. And, um, you know, he says, I want you to run all the tests on me again. So they did. They took three months doing it. And when they came back, uh, he sat down with his doctor and he brought his dossier, which was, you know, sort of, if you can see my hands, this doesn't quite do it justice. It, it was wow. thicker than that. But anyway, he had his whole dossier of papers they'd given him. He's kind of carrying it under his arm as he walks in. And the doctor gives him this thin little file like this and slides it across the desk. And the doctor says, um, according to this medical report, uh, you do not have multiple sclerosis and your blindness in your left eye is completely healed. And as an added bonus, your type 1 diabetes is completely gone. Amen. And he goes, yeah, well, doc, what am I supposed to do with this that you gave me? <laughs> kind of boom, puts it on the desk. And the doctor says, I am not authorized to comment on any medical report you may have previously received from this institution, which is obviously a very lawyered kind of a response. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he goes, well, but, but doc, I mean, what are you telling me? And the doctor says, according to this medical report, you, you know, the, the thin little one, um, you do not have MS. You are not blind in your left eye and your type one diabetes is gone. Now he obviously was aware already about the MS and the diabetes, uh, not the diabetes, the MS and the vision, because that's something he could measure and validate himself. But the diabetes was news to him. So he kind of pushed back again, and the doctor gave him the same response. I'm not authorized to comment on any medical report you may have previously received from this institution. So he walked out that day, and he you know, goes through the waiting room, and there are all these people, he said, and they had, you know, they were on conveyances and crutches and this, that, and the next. And uh, as he walks out, he said, he told me later, I thought, I'm the only one who's receiving any good news at this doctor's office today. Wow. So anyway, he goes out in the parking lot and he just starts sort of yelling, hey, everybody, you know, I had MS, look at me now. You know, He gathers a crowd and he ends up preaching to this crowd and leading some of them to the Lord. I mean, it was wow. very over the top. It's not the kind of thing that most people would be comfortable doing. But anyway, he's that yeah, kind of guy. You're standing there with records. You, you have, you're yeah. holding the records. Right. That's it. And yeah. so he ends up, he ends up giving this altar call. People get saved. Then he goes back to work, and because of all of his conditions, um, they had made accommodation for him, right? He had a special desk, he had a special computer workstation, he had this and that, and now he didn't really need all that. So he goes back to work, and both his home state and the federal government filed lawsuits against him for fraud because they said no one ever gets healed of MS. And, you know, the fact that you're claiming you had it and now you don't means you never did. And so all the money that we've spent, all these things that we have provided for you, you know, this was all fraudulent and we're coming after you. And, you know, the only thing, the only thing that kept him from being convicted in the end, it was thrown out of court, case dismissed. But uh, the only thing that kept him from being convicted was this medical dossier and this medical dossier. And the judge put into the record, you know, we have never heard of a case like this. These things, as far as I know, never happened. But anyway, they appear to have happened. There is no other explanation. And so we're going to let this one go. Hey, Amen. Come on. That's that's good news right there. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Serena, Serena is saying how when she got healed, I think she got healed on the broadcast. Like she just started going nuts telling everyone about it. Like that's what we got to do. That's that's amazing. You know, the medical doctor, you, you it sounds like they looked at it and they thought they're in a lot of trouble. They've misdiagnosed this person. And that's why, yeah, they, they thought they were in trouble for mm -hmm. some kind of crazy misdiagnosing that they right. switched medical records. They, they, I'm sure they were racking their brains. That's the amazing part is that they had so little answer that they were paranoid. They were about to get sued for, for yeah, wrongful right. diagnosis for, for uh, malpractice, you know, that they're going to, they're going to do that. That you, that's amazing. So I love that God heals. I love how, he, you know, and, and I think we've actually unraveled a lot of the mystery of, of healing. Uh, uh, I, I, let me, let me say that a different way. We've unraveled some of the mystery of healing, even on this broadcast that, you know, we previously, I didn't know you could just pray for people on an internet connection to see people healed, but we do it every night. 
Yeah. We see it healed every night, you know, and, and it just that reality check that, look, God is a good father who wants to heal his children and he's not restricted by anything. And so the idea that we put these restrictions on him on why he can or can't heal, it, it just, we need to throw out that out because all of those rules and regulations and, and, and this for this reason and that reason, those are all just limits to our faith. And well, you know, what we're doing here is really not dramatically different from say what an oral Roberts or someone like that might've done during the great healing revivals of 50, 70 years ago, where they'd say, you know, everybody reach out, put your hand on your TV screen. I'm putting my hand to the TV screen and we're just going to touch here. But you know, again, it's over the airwaves in this case, it's over the internet, but it's a difference without a meaning. And, uh, and so, you know, that point of contact became the, the place where the circuit of faith closed and suddenly you've got healing going on. And, you know, people used to mock it and ridicule it. But the fact is people got healed from it. In fact, my aunt died a couple of years ago, but I remember shortly before her death and she was not a believer at all. She hated the things of God. And as far as I know, well, I have no proof that she died in faith. I'll just put it that way. Um, yeah. But just before she died, we got into this conversation about healing because I was like, you know, let me pray for you. And she's like, no, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in God. You know that. And it kind of turned into one of those. Um, but anyway, out of that, we started talking about when she was a younger woman and she started telling me about how she would watch Oral Roberts on TV. And she said, you know, it was amazing how he could dupe the entire crowd. And I, was, I said, you know, I don't think he was duping the entire crowd. I think people were being healed. And she said, well, I remember seeing people get up out of wheelchairs or, you know, take the things out of their ears or throw away their glasses or whatever it was. But she said, I remember watching that. And I remember thinking, wow, that guy's really good. He's convinced these people. I said, you know, I've actually seen those things with my own eyes. And I started telling her some stories and she sat there kind of dumbfounded. It wasn't enough to move her to the place of faith at that time. But but notwithstanding, I think there, you know, it left an impression on her years and years and years later, Oral Roberts was in his salad days in the mid fifties and she died in 2018. So, I mean, you know, we're talking about something that had happened almost, you know, 65 years earlier and still she remembered it and it was kind of stuck in her brain, the things that she'd seen on television. Yeah. So you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, I, can I just stop us right here, Ren? I, your name is Ren. And I keep looking at Ren, uh, Pastor Ren Shuffman. And I, I think there's some woman on here. I've been watching the chat stream to see if anyone has right. put her name in. I think there's a woman on here and your name begins with Ren, just like Ren's name. Your, is Ren your full name? I don't, actually don't even know. Is that your full name or is that a shortened name? I'm not allowed to say such things without uh, <laughs> legal implications. You tell I'm me not authorized to discuss anything prior to being called Ren. Okay. Well, I think there's another Ren on this broadcast, okay. and I think it's a woman. And I think your full name could be Renata or maybe something like Rensha. I, I, may, be, I may be very slightly off on the spelling or pronunciation. Okay. If you're there, hopefully you are, so I don't look like a false prophet, uh, would you let us know that you're present? Because I, I think the Lord wants to heal you of whatever you've got. I am checking on my Ren Shuffman page as well. Uh, hopefully we can see everyone's comment. Okay. Uh, it, it, Renata uh, is a very German name, but like I say, it may be something a little it. off of that, like Rensha or something in that direction. Or just have a Ren in it in some yeah capacity. That'd be great. I mean, I know we've had a Lore Ren on here a few times. Hallelujah. Was her first name Sophia? Huh? Was her first name Sophia? No, I don't know. You said you had a Loren, so I said Sophia Loren. I, I got you. I see what you yeah. did there. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, look, uh, while we're waiting on that to see if somebody replies on that, and, and if uh, if you the, the Freedom Fellowship Church broadcast is the main place we're broadcasting, so if anybody is commenting, that's you, and we don't see it, jump, find that broadcast, the Ren, the Freedom Fellowship. We see a lot of the, the comments, but occasionally we're, we're going to multiple places, and occasionally one of them will fail. For some reason, we don't see the comments, but uh, look at this one. As you were talking right here, this is somebody that I prayed for. She had a plate in her leg, and she, she hasn't felt it. I said that plates were being removed that night that I prayed over Serena, and she no longer has a plate in her leg. God dissolved wow. that metal right here on the broadcast. Wow. Come on, that's just incredible. That's just incredible. Yeah. So we'll wait and we'll see if any uh, any other people with the name Ren jump in here. Uh, 
So, hey, guys, do me a favor. Maybe there's a Ren that's on your friends list right now that has not seen uh, this broadcast yet. This is a great time to go ahead and share the broadcast. Do it as a public post so we can find her. She need, Look, obviously, the Lord's highlighting her so that the, the, probably because she needs healing. Like I see an injury happening in her that needs healing. So we want to believe that that's going to happen. So do me a favor. Plant a seed of evangelism right now by just hitting the share button and reaching yep. someone for the Jesus. Uh, see, Misty said she short shared it with Laura Wren. Oh, yeah. It's, in, you know, it's interesting. I was in Australia. Well, I haven't gone this year and I'm not going this year because COVID, they've got the country locked down. No foreigners allowed in and, you know, everybody yeah. quarantines and all that. But um, anyway, last year I was there and I was speaking at this church that I've been to a number of times and I had a word and I was sure it was for someone in the room. And I called the person out by name and I had three specific pieces of information and nobody responded. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then somebody in the crowd uh, says, hey, that's my neighbor. And I just texted her and the word exactly fits her. And so she relayed what I had said. And it led to not only a, a healing in the family, but it led to the neighbor receiving the Lord. So occasionally I get some piece of information wrong. Sean no. Bolt likes to say that God sets him up so he misses one or two things just to make him, you know, keep him humble. So you know, I <laughs> well, wait here Karen, in faith and hope. <laughs> Karen's claiming it for her, Karen. Karen. Oh yeah. Where but see, I, I thought it was like Renata or Rensha or something, but I could have had that wrong. I, I was very clear on the Ren part though. I kept looking at your name. I'm like, there's something having to do with a Ren going on here. So what what is Karen claiming? Karen, yeah, Karen we'll, we'll pray for you anyways. Karen, what do you, what are you standing for? Yeah, like, what, what are you praying for? What, what do, do you need prayer for? Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll wait on that as she replies real quick. Love, Brian, you said you had a neurologist that wouldn't even see you again after your surgery. I had the same thing with my neck. I made an appointment a year later when I had no more pain, and he wouldn't take my appointment because I told him I was going to get healed. <clears throat> he didn't like me very much that I made an appointment to come prove him wrong. Uh, Here we, we had go. a good Raquel argument. Duca says Renata is oh, wow. the niece. Renata. Ren, yeah. Well, yeah. Renata, Renate, whatever. Raquel, are whatever. you are you German or Austrian or something? You look like you could be. Raquel Duca. Well, we'll wait for the response. I, I yeah. Assume There's always like a 15 or 20 second reply. Yeah. There. Okay. He He's saying he's Ren. So that's the way you pronounce his name as well. Ren Strange. That's a strange way to spell Ren. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, that's that's Ren too. So we actually have a couple that fit that. Wow. Norwegian and Italian. How interesting. Norwegian and Italian. Okay. Well, lean into it. Lean into it. What else did you have that that will uh, kind of suss it out? I had the sense that this was a, this, well, I, again, I thought it was a Renata or maybe a Rensha or something pretty close to that. And which, given that Raquel is Norwegian and Italian, those, those are languages where you might hear names or and those sorts of sounds in a name. Uh, but I had the sense that this was a woman who'd been to a doctor, had a diagnosis of something, possibly a young woman. I'm not sure, but but I don't I don't think an old woman. So let's say, you know, mid 40s and and younger. Uh, and she'd she'd been to the doctor. She'd been having some problems. She'd gotten a diagnosis. I, I don't know that it's life threatening, but it's very discouraging. It's not the news that she wants. And I think the Lord wants to just turn all of that around. So Raquel, is does that fit your niece, Renata? Yeah, just message us and let us know, and we'll, we'll look for that comment real quick. But let's go ahead and pray. So you need healing from a wreck, Karen. Let's pray for her real quick while we're waiting on that reply. Unknown why you blacked out before a wreck. That's that's a bad thing. Have they suspended your license? Yeah, we'll find out. Here. Uh, Raquel said she is young, and I sent her a message. Okay, <laughs> Amen. Cool. All right. Amen. How All right. Well, about? meanwhile, um, let's see. Who The, the woman who said Karen. she had a wreck? Karen. Karen. All right, Karen, Karen. we're going to pray for you right now. Thank yeah, you, Jesus. And healing from a wreck. Huh. So are you? you must still be carrying injuries from the wreck, I take it. Yeah, I think that's what she means, healing yeah, from a wreck. Okay. Some sort of mobility impairment. Yeah, she said no, they didn't take her license. So, Okay, all right. So, Karen, here we go. We're going to pray for you. Hold out your hand. Uh, just pretend I'm Oral Roberts, even though I'm not. 
and uh, let's try to touch palms. So, Lord, I just pray for Karen now. I just hold out my hand to her as she holds her hand out yeah. to me, and as uh, Pastor Wren holds his hand out as well. And, Lord, we thank you that you're healing over the airwaves. You're healing through the Internet, whether it's airborne Internet or uh, cables that are buried by our cable companies and phone companies. We ask now in the name of Jesus that healing would flow from us to Karen and that she would receive healing right now into the neck, that the neck yes, would Lord. come free and that the uh, the, the uh, pinched areas of the nerve and also the bones that are somehow impaired, cracked, fragmented, that these would all come back into a divine alignment. In the name of Jesus, receive healing. All the pain, leave the neck, become normal in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let us know if you see it, feel anything happening in your neck so we can continue to pray for you. Let me ask you this, Karen. Who? What, what is, uh, is it? Is it Denise or Dennis? Is there a Denise or Dennis? Does those names mean anything to you? And and the word Norwood, Norwood, does. let me know if those mean anything to you as you check your neck there, Denise or Dennis. We've got a Ronald Norwood on the chat right here. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I have something for him. I I'll check with Karen. Sometimes the Lord will give me something to move on and sometimes, I but I want to make sure whoever we're in front of that it doesn't fit them first. Um, hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, and Ronald, if Denise or Dennis fits you, let me know. Uh, Cause I just felt that very strongly at the end of that prayer. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't learned transitions that well from the Lord yet. So I still work on who I'm, <laughs> who I'm in front of. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lord. And and November 10th, I see the date, November 10th, if that means anything to anybody. And we'll just lean into that a little bit as well. But we'll pray for those healings. And there was another one that commented on the Reiner, Ren, Ren, Renier, R-E-N-I-E-R, -E -E or something like that. So there was a couple of them. That's a strange name to have more than one or two for. So yeah. that's definitely the Holy Spirit, for sure. It's not like you're like, is there a David out there? <laughs> I perceive you are a prophet. <laughs> Again, I'm looking at the people on the chat stream and I don't see this name. So uh, Denise Lonstead, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see your name. Yeah. Several of those ones that know you actually are on the broadcast quite regularly. So. Oh, interesting. Like Jan, okay. Jan Kim is going to be at the OSI and she's on here all the time. So yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so um, there is, okay. I, I think there's somebody named Cindy. But I don't see a Cindy on the chat stream, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's connected to someone on the broadcast, or maybe she's on your other stream, Ren. I don't know. But anyway, I see something. If you've ever seen one of those key rings where there's two pieces that go together, but you can pull them apart and you know give your keys to the like the valet, but keep your important keys that you don't want the valet to have, or if you get your car washed, that sort of thing. Uh, there's something like that that I'm seeing in connection with Cindy. And I, I think this means that she's had two parts, uh, her and another person who have been joined together and somehow they got separated. And I don't think this is a romance. I think this is a friendship of some kind, but there's been a separation for Cindy and God's about to bring this thing back together so that this long lost uh, friendship that's been some, in some way compromised uh, is about to be fixed. Linda wow. Jean Thompson says, Cindy Carroll Holloway. Who is Cindy Carroll Holloway? Is that a friend of yours? Yeah, I think it's just a friend. I think that's what she posted before. Does your friend Cindy have such a situation in her life? Yeah, let us know, Linda. Linda's the one that uh, her kidney got restored yesterday, and I posted about it. She had a uh, damaged pinky for like decades, and as I prayed, it popped and moved and began to function normally. And she's in her 70s, and the Lord gave her a word that he was restoring her youth. Uh, okay, she says, yes, friend, she has many things going on right now, health-wise. Huh. All right. And we're still waiting to hear back from Raquel Duca about her Renata niece. I think so. I think so. And I've had a couple on the November 10th and uh, the Dennis one. So uh, Dennis or Denise or maybe both. So I couldn't quite make it out. It could be something like Dennis or Denise. It could have been like the other night. I couldn't get, I couldn't quite figure out uh, uh, Diane. I, like it wasn't Diane. It was like, it's not Diane. It's like Diane, Diane. And it was D O I instead of an A D I O instead of an A. And so finally I got it, oh. you know, so yeah. uh, it, it doesn't have to be Denise or, or, or Dennis. It could be something really close to that. Uh, she says. Okay. 
Okay, could be me, my cousin Cindy. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure huh. anything. Well, we'll just pray for it, right? Whatever, you, whatever you feel. Yeah, Lord, we just ask for um, this Cindy word and this Cindy person, whoever she is, for that restoration, Lord. I, just the, the 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 sense of a key ring being pulled apart and although the parts still match perfectly they've not been joined together in a long time and lord you are the god who cares not only about our bodies you care about our relationships and so i ask that you would bring back together uh the the pieces that have been separated as it were put humpty back together again hallelujah thank, thank you lord. jesus and and i just call forth finished work and karen she's feeling heat in her neck she said uh uh uh, hallelujah. Right now there's heat in her neck and I just finished works in the name of Jesus, complete healing into Karen. Father, we're just going to see it right now on this broadcast, a complete healing in the name of Jesus. Glory. So uh, Ronald Norwood said, I have a Dennis and a Denise in my family. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you. D does, does the date, it doesn't have to fit you, but does the date November 10th uh, have any application to you guys at all? Um, uh, maybe, I saw my birthday for a second. The second date I saw was my birthday. Uh, I'm obviously Ren. I'm a pastor, and it was April 6th. Uh, does anything about me fit another person in the in the family there? I just saw my birthday for some reason. April. It could be like April 4th, 5th, 6th, like, like 4, 4, 5, 6. Like I saw that uh, right there at the beginning of April, 4, 5, 6 maybe, because um, I just saw me and my birthday. Uh, let me know, Ronald. And I know I've, I've given a word to you guys before. I know you guys got healed of neck injuries. I remember that because it was just both of you had neck injuries. So that stuck out to me that a husband and wife both had some problems in their neck. Uh, so just let me know there if that makes any sense to you. My mom is Cindy. Yeah, there's a couple of ones that m m match the Cindy here. You know, that's the thing about this. This broadcast keeps growing. And every time I'm like, Lord, you got to give me more and more specific things because I got to have three things to figure out who it's for. Right. You're 32 <laughs> years old. <laughs> this is your birthday. Your best friend's name in high school was like, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. There it is. My daughter's birthday is the fifth. Okay. That's what I thought. I saw me, but it felt like it was like a, a little bit before. So my daughter's birthday is the fifth. Okay. Ronald, I just feel like, like I have a word for you. Um, uh, ha, uh, there, there's just, there's a revival fire in you. There is something held up that wants to come out. I almost see like your spirit, like literally I, I'm seeing like the image that I'm seeing is like this prison door, but it's almost like um, a solitary confinement. And I see your spirit in there and it's banging and kicking on the door saying, let me out. And I see you actually just, sm it's sm and this is your spirit. It's not just you, it is your spirit. And it smashes the door down and it comes out just flame on raging. Like I'm ready to go. And there's just this, like what has been held captive is being released in you. The Lord is trying to release something in your spirit that has been held captive. And I almost see like the enemy, uh, doing, uh, mental warfare on you, like trying to convince you that there's no strength and no power trying to convince and keep you down. Almost like, like the image I'm seeing is like something you would see in a movie where the bat, where the, where the agent gets caught. And then the enemy is like trying to do mind games on them. And uh, <laughs> that, does that make sense? Like, I'm trying to give you the picture here. And, it, and it's like, it's not working anymore and you're busting out of that. So whatever, whatever the enemy was trying to convince you, uh, the lack in, in your supernatural experience, in your ministry calling, that the Lord is saying you're coming into a season where I'm releasing revival fire out of you and it's going to pour out in greater measure. So receive, well, okay, hold on. <laughs> what did you just say? Uh, wow. Dale Mass just said that to me yesterday. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Praise God. I love Dale. I love Out Dale. of the mouth of two or more witnesses. Hey, send me, um, uh, it was yesterday. Was it on his live broadcast? Uh, f find the minute marker for me on that word. I want to piece that together and show that. That's amazing. Hallelujah. So come on, just receive that and walk in it in the name of Jesus. And some of you, some of you right now, you heard that and you said, man, I want a word like that. That's for you too. just grab it and claim it that there's revival fire coming onto your life and you're going to step onto it. But I want you to be very clear and Kendall back me up on this. If you receive revival fire, 
It's so that you can pour it out on others. You cannot contain that inside of yourself and keep it to yeah. yourself. Revival yeah. fire is meant to be spread. So if you say, nope, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to take the time to go give it away at the grocery store, at church, at, at you know, at the gas station, then, then don't ask for something you won't give away. Don't ask for something you won't give away because anything you won't give away that can't be poured out of you will become stagnant and stale inside of you. And will eventually what was meant to bring life will rot you away because you're not fulfilling it and it'll rot you away. So you cannot just hold gifts inside yourself. Okay. It's not, it's, that's not the point of the gift. So receive the revival fire and start pouring it out on other people. Come on. That's good. Anyways, go ahead. Your turn. You know, I was going to say something actually kind of a teachable moment based on what you were just saying. Come on there, which is, uh, you know, I was talking with some people earlier today and, you know, we, we talk a lot, a lot about revival in America and, and at least in the kind of circles that we run in, I don't know that all of America is talking about revival. And, uh, you know, we, we keep saying revival is coming and God's bringing revival and, I, I believe that, but, you know, some years ago I was talking with a, a very prominent, visible church leader, somebody who's known for, you know, talking about how God's in a good mood and how, you know, great things are coming and that sort of thing. And as we were talking, I said to him, do you think it's bad enough yet? And he kind of looked at me strange and he said, what, what are you talking about? And I said, do you think it's bad enough yet? He goes, well, what do you, what do you mean? And I said, well, there's no time in the Bible where God moved in a great way where it wasn't an absolutely dire situation. Just Come on. absolutely dire. And I said, so my question is, is it bad enough yet? In other words, is it so bad that now God can finally move because the people of God will actually cry out to him? You know, it says when God rescued them out of Egypt, the people, their, their, uh, their cry came before the Lord. And, and th this isn't just boo-hoo. I mean, this is like, oh, God. I mean, they just can't hold it back anymore. And I said, do you think it's bad enough yet? So this leader said to me, no, I don't think it's bad enough yet. Not, not on those terms. No. Uh, so anyway, a couple more years went by and I was with him again and I said, is it bad enough yet? And he said, you know, I think it's just about bad enough yet. And, you know, after, after three and a half months of COVID and, you know, many of our cities on fire and race riots, uh, watching somebody get killed on television in a chokehold. I mean, I, I don't know all the details. That's for a jury to sort out, but it sure does not look like it was anything other than a premeditated killing. I, I don't uh, think anybody disagrees on that one. Yeah. I mean, you just, you look at this and it's like, we're watching this happen before our eyes and, you know, the country is just being torn asunder. Uh, you know, the, just the polarization politically, um, you know, we've had some new rulings coming down from the high court and I, I think it's just about bad enough yet. And I think with that, you know, there's kind of a kind of a sense that if God doesn't move, uh, we we're doomed. I mean, there, we don't have any solutions. The Fed's out of money. Uh, you know, the government doesn't have any more levers to pull. Um, they can't figure out how to stop COVID from resurging. I mean, we can just go on and on and on with all these tales of woe. And the one single thing we need is we need God to move. And, and it's bad enough yet. There's just nothing else that's going to sort this out. And so, God, please move. Please, please. The sooner the better. We, we, we must have you. And I, I think if we can get that cry of desperation in our hearts, um, I, I think that's what ultimately moves the hand of God. Yeah, I, I just literally taught that the other day. I talked about, you know, before every great move of God, there's usually some kind of uh, horrific uh, season that we walk through. Moses, you know, they killed all the children under two to bring salvation to the land of Israel. Then here's Jesus who shows up on the scene. They do the same thing again. Another genocide, you know, another infanticide happens again. And there's all these times where the enemy sees the season. He sees that God is about to pour out and he goes full frontal assault. And so you can tell the season's coming. Even Jesus said, how will we know when you're coming? He goes, you'll see wars and rumors of wars. And, you know, he started laying it out. He says, the enemy will see me coming and will go on full frontal assault. And you'll know the time is near because there you'll see the battle start to begin to happen. And yeah, so right. we're in that we're in it right now. So that, that, that this is how we know that everything we've been prophesying about the revival lines up with the word of God. This always happens before okay. revival. It's there's and always you know, a crime. The other thing he said is that nation will rise against nation. And we reflexively default to like, you know, U S versus Mexico or Germany versus whatever France or you know, whatever. And on the one hand, yeah, maybe that has some truth to it, 
but the word for nation in biblical thought is an ethno-linguistic group, people who speak the same language. And of course, originally these various languages were closely identified with a very tightly defined genetic pool of people who were all ultimately of one set of common ancestors. And so they were a family. So, you know, the French would have been of one family, whereas the Germans would have been of another family. And so these, when we say, na and then ultimately they became geopolitical entities. But, but when we talk about nations, we really define them by the language or, or one would say maybe the racial uh, makeup or the genetic makeup. And it's interesting that what we're seeing around the world, I just saw a news report today about a major confrontation that happened between India and China on their common border and uh, a bunch of people were killed in the confrontation, both Indian and Chinese. They, by design, don't carry weapons, so they ended up getting in a skirmish with rocks, and a senior level Indian commander was thrown off a ledge and fell into the gorge and was killed, and wow. several dozen Chinese were killed. But that's the kind of conflict we're talking about, right? Here it's Indian and Chinese, but you know, in our own country, you know, it's, it's a race war. I mean, we don't like to say it. We don't like to think about it. But but I mean, it is. And Jesus said these things, these things will be signs of the end of time. So I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think we're getting a lot closer. I really think we live in very late times. I've done some teaching on this recently, and um, it's it's definitely arrested a lot of people's attention. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, so, yeah, nation against nation. N the nation itself is against itself. I mean, that yeah. actually makes sense. You're, you're, you're pulling on, on each other. That actually makes sense. You know, so we're, we're headed towards revival. So, the, the, look, guys, the, this is uh, – don't take that as a, as a negative. Oh, my gosh, woe is me. We're in trouble. No, 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 no. Th there's a revival coming, okay? So whether, however close we are to the end, we know that right now we're about to walk into a season where God's going to pour out. Uh, and, and you know, it's so funny. People, uh, so many people will get and message me and be like, look out for the chip. Look out for the mark of the beast. And they're all so terrified. Oh, you know, you get the mark of the beast and this chip and that chip and 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 this person's going to do it. And and I keep telling them, and they'll, they'll come to me, they go, aren't you concerned? And I'm like, no, that's exciting. And they're like, what do you mean it's exciting? Yeah, I think this might be the mark of the beast. Yes, is always my answer. Woohoo! And they go, what, <laughs> what do you mean? And I said, are you telling me as a believer in Jesus, you don't want him to come back and get you? You don't want him to come back? He said, these things will happen and then I'll come back. So he's literally giving you an ETA and you're saying, Jesus, stay in heaven, go away. And I'm like, no, either we want him to come back or we don't stop freaking out because the signs of the time are here. It just means we're going home like, yes. So you know what? So what? Oh, my gosh. We got all this one world order. That means Jesus is coming back. Yay. So let's celebrate that. Stop being in fear and realize that as believers and sons and daughters, our father is coming back and Jesus is coming back to claim his bride. All right. But here's the truth. He's not coming back until we're a spotless bride. It says that in the word. So we got to clean up some of our act and get together in unity and come together. Okay. We got to stop bruising each other and expecting Jesus to show up for a bruised bride. So we can't beat each other up. We got to be in unity. We got to come together. So, you know, healing, uh, you may not believe in it, but like we're doing our best here to heal up the bride physically, but we got to do it spiritually as well. All of those yeah. things has to happen. L let me ask you this, Ken, let me shift a little bit here. So yep. you were talking about deliverance earlier, and I know there's a connection to this, but maybe you could lean into this and, and, and help some of the people on here to understand, and then we'll pray for some of them. Um, but uh, like, so how, how often, and can you tell me how you see, um, deliverance as it relates to healing. Like I know I've, you were talking earlier about the eyes and you were saying there was a spirit. And so there was a healing that came w when that spirit was removed. So a form of, so deliverance brought healing. So like a, a spirit of infirmity of some sort, right? Yeah. So can you kind of lean into that and maybe tell some, like what you've seen or, or what you understand about that? Well, I think a lot of people miss the point that uh, it says in scripture that Jesus called his disciples to him and he gave them power and authority to heal the sick and to drive out demons. And so I think for many people, they think they were given power to heal the sick, period. And they were given power to drive out demons, period. But what I've seen, and I have a whole teaching on this, but just to summarize very succinctly, uh, I think a lot of times 
when people are um, when they are sick, the problem they have often will have a spirit associated with it, and it's what we call an afflicting spirit. So it's a spirit that creates a physical malady, an affliction. Um, it is, there are other spirits that deal with the mind and the emotions and so forth. But in this case, we're talking about afflicting spirits. And so the longer things have gone, I mean, I've been kind of at this for a number of years. I started working for John when I was in my very early 20s. And uh, John so Like Wimber. 10 years now. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's been gone 23 years. So that right there. And I told you I worked for him for 13 years. Is, you know, it, it, it starts to get to be a longer and longer story. But anyway, um, the, the the simple truth is I the longer I go, the more healings I see that are tied to getting demons out of people. I'm not ready to say that all healings require deliverance, but a surprisingly large percentage do. And I might even say, if you don't have the theological paradigm for it, a distressingly large percentage of them do. And so with that, what I found is if, if it's that type of a, of a condition without the evil spirit being driven away or driven off or driven out, you can use the language you prefer, but without that evil spirit leaving, the healing isn't actually going to last. The, there might be momentary, maybe even short-term symptomatic relief, but in the end, it's not enough to actually, you know, clear it out and be done with it. So deliverance is a necessary tool to be effective in the healing ministry much of the time. Yeah. And, and what's interesting about that is, is, is I think in America, we have this stigma that word scares people away. Like they're like, oh, I don't, I don't they, they get really worried about that. And it sounds, I think we watch too many movies. Let me put it that way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just think we watch too many movies. So they get caught up in that. What's And so they think, oh my gosh, if I have an evil spirit, somehow that makes me evil. That doesn't make you a Satan worshiper. It doesn't make you some kind of cultist uh, to have an evil spirit, to have a, being oppressed by a spirit or something like that. That. When I went to Africa for the first time, I was so shocked, not only about how often we had to deal with deliverance where we were encountering uh, demonic things, but what I was most shocked about it is they, they had no embarrassment because they had to deal with it. They're like, Hey, something's going on. I think I got an evil spirit. They would come up right. and say, I think I got an evil spirit. We pray for him. And sure enough, something would happen and, 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 and they get clean of it. And they're like, thank you. That's been right. bothering me. Almost like we pulled out a, a, a splinter, like, oh, thank you. You finally got the splinter out. And it was like, there was no shame. There was no uh, embarrassment. It was, thank you for helping me get through that. And it was done. And so I think one of the lies the enemy has done here, and maybe you can agree or, or lean into it if I, if I've, I'm misunderstanding is just convincing people that somehow there's shame attached to recognizing that the enemy actually wants to attack us. Yeah, that's right. I think it's exactly right. And the other thing that goes with it is, um, you know, there's, 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 um, I mean, I've heard so many people say this, and I can remember as a younger guy hearing people say this, but that there's almost a presumptive, you know, you're deeply in sin if you have an evil spirit. There you go. Um, maybe even you're an axe murderer, and I don't want my children around you, you know, kind of thing. And a, a small percentage of people, maybe that's true, but, but for the most part, that's not what's going on. It's that something has happened. Either they, they wandered into sin, not really knowing all that they were getting into, and it created an open door, or maybe alternatively, uh, something was done to them. They were victimized in one way or another, and that created an open door. But you know, now this evil spirit is resident there, and it's creating all kinds of havoc in their life. And it might be mentally, could be emotionally, could be physically, could be socially slash relationally. I mean, there's a number of dimensions that this could be uh, occurring in, but we don't have a grid for it. We don't have a paradigm for it because even in our post-enlightenment world that we're living in now, um, there are there's enough of a residue of kind of the teaching of the enlightenment that, you know, all of that supernatural stuff, if it's even real, is sort of up there. It's not down here. And as a result, if you start talking that way, people are just sort of like, well, you, you're weird. I, I don't believe that. That's That's dumb kind of thing. And so it, it's a paradigm shift. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think that's really good. And I know that that, you know, that's part of uh, inner healing. You know, my wife uh, does inner healing ministry in our church. She's 
amazing at inner healing does you know uh, sessions and that's always a part of it is finding out where the enemy has grabbed a hold or where he's attacking you and and dealing with that and then closing those doors getting rid of all those open doors that the enemies have access to you it doesn't make there's no shame involved in it in fact it's getting rid of shame uh, the enemy had access to uh adam and eve in the garden because they weren't intimately next to Jesus. They weren't intimately next to the father. The, the only reason the enemy had access to him is because the father wasn't present at that moment. And so it's like, we got to get the enemy out and get the father present with you, get the Holy Spirit present with you day in and day out and keep the enemy as far away from you as possible. Like it's not, it's not shameful. It's not weird. It's not movie. Okay. Nobody's head is spinning around. I mean, I haven't seen that. Maybe you have, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I've seen stuff that makes you go like, Whoa, that's freaky, but not, I need to run and hide. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and realizing that as uh, believers, realizing you guys as children of God, that you have the, the power of God in you that rests in you to tread on serpents. What do you think that means? It means that you don't have to worry about them biting your ankles. You can tread on them. Right. It's not scary. It's not shameful. It's not something that should be feared. And, and there are a lot of people that are walking around with pain in their body, with injuries. Be, here's a great example. Uh, you know, you're opening the door to the enemy when you carry around bitterness or anger. And I don't know how many people I see that have arthritis in their hands, in their hands. And when you, when you ask them, who are you so angry at in your life that you want to punch? And then you find out that the arthritis started shortly after they became so angry at someone that they want to knock them in the face. Yeah, that anger became a source for the enemy to grab hold of them, and 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 science proves that out over and over again. That's that right. stress and anger and bitterness lead to the body breaking down, and so those become spirit of infirmities that say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to cripple your body by using your anger against you." Mm -hmm. You know, and so letting those things go is just a part of being uh, a fully restored son and daughter of God. So let's stop. Let's stop demonizing it. Deliverance. How's that? <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended. That was a pretty good one. I'm going to write someone quote that. Uh, yeah, pretty that's pretty good. Hallelujah. So whether whether or not it's the enemy, whether or not it's just in, it's just a normal, regular, old infirmity, let's get healed. Let's get set free, right? Yeah, that's that's, right. what, I, that's what I think. I mean, I think we should pray yeah. for some. You you tell me where you where you're feeling like the Holy Spirit's leading you. You know, well, I, I, I was going to you. say that I've often said um, that there should be no more shame attached to being demonized than there is to saying at church, "I have a head cold. Will you pray for me to get rid of my cold?" Yeah, I mean, because, you've been infected. Same, right? Yeah, exactly. And and, and again, you know, people kind of. Well, but you know, demons come to sin, and so you must have been in sin, and so there's all this sort of thing that people get stuck in. But it's uh, it, we just have to change the paradigm. That's it. We just have to because it, it, for so long, demons have been associated with you are an axe murderer or a child molester or something. Uh, you know, you're Jeffrey Dahmer, and so we, you know, people just don't want to go there. And then the other thing is, I think a lot of times people are overwhelmed with the uh, some of the manifestations that can happen. It, it's not accepted in polite company, and so with that, there's a there's a desire to kind of squash it all and keep everything, you know, suitable for boardroom etiquette. Yeah, yeah. Look, all of us have done things wrong. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have open windows or open doors. Okay. It doesn't, there's no shame in that. Every one of us have been upset about something and we've allowed the enemy to whisper in our ear. Every one of you would say, dang it, man, I don't want those thoughts because that's the enemy speaking to me. So if the enemy is speaking to you, that's, that's what we're talking about. Just that little whisper it means that the enemy is attacking you. So it's not all of us deal with that. All of us deal with that. Well, let's right? not forget that even uh, even Peter, Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. And so uh, it's it's very biblical. that It was one of his disciples and he had to rebuke him as, <laughs> in the same way. So, yeah. And all he was trying to do was just keep Jesus alive. No, no, Lord, heaven forbid you should go to the cross. Yeah. Right. He was. He was being sweet and caring about, you know, his savior, not having to go endure suffering. Right. But that moment. So it's like, you don't have to be lodged in sin. Peter wasn't lodged in sin. 
Hey, man, I'll get off that rant, but that's my rant. Uh, so we want to see some people set free tonight. We want to see some people healed. Uh, and I think some of you guys just need to just, you know, you don't have to define where it came from or how it started, but just recognize that God wants you whole, healed, and set free. Um, and I think those two are important to understand the difference. Um, uh, you know, where I, I, I can't tell you how many times I prayed for someone to be healed and saw nothing and then rebuked a spirit of infirmity and they were healed. Yeah. You know, and just tell the enemy to stop putting stuff on them. And so we just yeah, believe that's that right. that's what God wants to do. Hey man, what do you feel? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the chat stream. Uh, people wanting deliverance from trauma, sin, anger, uh, husbands yeah. that need deliverance, bipolar. I mean, the thing, the thing with deliverance I've found is you can do it if you are able to engage with people in a substantive way over a video link. But most of the time, I don't allow it. Uh, to go on by video because it's too involved yeah. and usually the person's alone and it's better if they have somebody there to facilitate. One time I was praying for a friend and he'd picked up a spirit in Thailand. He, he's actually a very consecrated guy, but he'd been kind of foolish and gotten too near a temple. And uh, so the spirit had jumped on him and uh, he had come down with among other things, chronic fatigue. And so I knew him pretty well and, I, you know, he was in, he was in the Philippines and I was in Los Angeles and it was just not going to work to get together. So I thought, all right, well, let's just go for it. And so we started to pray. And when I rebuked the spirit and told it to come out, he vomited and he, you know, he turned his head as he starts to vomit, which is a good thing because if he hadn't, his, the vomit would have hit the keyboard of the computer and the whole thing would have just, <laughs> that would have been the end of the, of the, of the, you know, conversation. Yeah. But, Anyway, it can happen uh, that way. It's not, it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, yeah, but so we're not going to lean in deliverance. But all I was referencing was just like when we're praying for you for healing, just recognize that we're going to be telling the enemy to get off you too in that that kind of way. If you think you need something more serious, then get a hold of Ken or, or you know, Rachel does inner healing, which is a, a bit, inner healing. A, a big part of that's deliverance. So get a hold of her, like set it up, but follow through with that. But for tonight, you know, we want to see your bodies healed and whole. And so rebuking the enemy off you is a part of that. Sometimes it's just simply, you know, the enemy just attacking you, not something you need to be delivered from some crazy uh, uh, thing. Some of it That's is correct. just is just forgiveness. Yeah. You know, um, we we allow things to take root and take hold because our, our lack of forgiveness or whether it be t for somebody else or to ourselves, we need to forgive the things that have happened to us or um, the way that we have thought about ourselves in regards to the things that have happened to us. Um, Self-blame is a big is a big thing. Um that I've, that I've found, um, self-blame or, um, just anger toward other people and the things that have, that have happened to you. That is not, um, that's not your fault. Yeah. So, so, you know, we're, we'll lean into this more in the conference. That's why the OSI conference being in person is so powerful because you can come there and you can lean into this a little bit more, you know, Ken will probably, you know, I'm going to have him teach on this a little bit. He has more than one session. So we'll find some, you know, more stuff for that he'll be leaning into, but that this is an important topic that we need to discuss and stop making it, you know, uh, um, off the table of discussion, it's important because there are a lot of people that just need to be free. So we just wanted to highlight that. But tonight we're going to pray for some bodies, get some people healed up um, and understand that some of that can just be an assault from the enemy, not, not holding on to you, not ripping you apart, but just an assault. Uh, and, and so letting that go and saying, Lord, I believe that I'm good enough to be healed. I believe I'm loved enough to be healed. I'm going to let go and forgive other people and not hold on to all that stuff. That just kind of shuts some of those doors so that you can't walk in healing. I think so anyways. No, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some of these comments that are coming in on, okay. the, uh, on the chat stream. Yeah. You know, um, I think people get this misconception that you have it's to feel a certain way to forgive somebody. Let's not misunderstand. Forgiveness is a choice. We choose to forgive somebody. We choose to forgive ourselves. And sometimes we have to continue to do so. So um, if it's if it feels like a struggle, it's okay. Struggle through it, but still make the choice. And even when we go through stuff like that, a lot of times I'll, the, the when we lead through prayer, I'll say, 
Um, I'll say, okay, repeat this and just say, I choose to forgive these people. And sometimes you have to keep repeating that. And then even with yourself, every day, I sometimes. choose to forgive myself and it's, it's a complete choice. So it might take a while for you to actually feel like you've gone through, but we speak things into existence. And as you continue to repeat it to yourself and repeat it uh, upon that, you'll feel a lifting and slowly. And sometimes it, as you repeat it over and over again, the lifting will continue to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, and so it's just, don't feel like, well, I thought I let go of that. Well, if you let it go and then it tries to come back, the enemy's not going to stop trying to come back uh, um, with something that still, that still hurts. But it doesn't mean you have to allow him to take a foothold. You just say, no, I let that go. And you need to find a scripture to stand on that you can, that you can, quote over yourself because the word of God is life. So when you're quoting those things and you repeat that back to whatever the, the negative things are trying to come over you, you quote positive scripture. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I am an overcomer. The Lord is my shelter. I shall not want, you know, whatever the scripture is, whatever your need is, you find a scripture that will that you can stand on in the midst of the times that the enemy tries to bring in temptation back into your heart and into your life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Stand on the word. Just stand on the word and, you know, and, and make it a, a daily choice to walk and forget. Same thing with your healing. Don't let the enemy convince you you're not healed. I don't know how many people want to come into agreement with the enemy when they've been healed. Don't agree with the enemy about anything. Walk in your healing. Walk as a son and daughter with well, God, where two or more come together and agree upon anything. Okay, that's a spiritual principle. So who are you agreeing with today? Are you agreeing with the enemy that you're, oh, I didn't get healed last time, so I'm not going to get healed tonight? Or are you agreeing with God who says, I want to restore you. I have plans for your future. By your by my stripes, you're healed. Like who's agreeing? Who are you going to agree with tonight? Just make a decision. Are you going to agree with God's word or the enemy's word? That's it. Just plain and simple, line in the sand, very easy, spiritual principle where two or more agree upon anything. So pick who you want to agree with tonight. Pick who you want to agree with. We're going to lean into that. We're agreeing for your healing. And we're agreeing that you're going to see that. Elijah said to the children of Israel, on Mount Carmel, just before he called down fire on the sacrifice. How long will you halt between two opinions or stagger between two opinions? Depends on the translation you read. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him. And I think for a lot of Christians, I, I, I really, I mean, I, I feel hesitant saying this, but I've seen it enough that given that we're here, it seems appropriate to say it. I think for many Christians, they halt between two opinions. And part of the reason they do that is because of compromise in their own lives. They've spent so much time flirting with the world, flirting with the things the devil throws at them, that um, they actually, they, they don't have the ability to hold in their own minds one truth and just say, this is the truth I believe, never mind that other thing over there. And I think that's really what you're speaking to when you're talking about people who, you know, they can't seem to, to, to lay hold of the word of God and stand with what it says. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you feeling like praying for some people now? You got anything else? Well, I, I think there's, I, you, you know, it's funny. I, I had a momentary glimpse and I'm not a hundred percent sure it was right, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. I think there is somebody who has some sort of a growth under the arm, the left arm. Uh, in the arm, well, it could be the arm, what we call the armpit, but it may actually be up inside the flesh of the shoulder area. But there's some sort of a growth, I think, and it's giving some sort of pain that, you know, they can't, they're just not able to have full mobility to it. So I want to pray for that condition, but I'd like to know if, if that person is on the, the chat stream, though, or Amen. somewhere. So let us know. I'm watching hey, for Clint that. Curlin, I see. I saw your name go by. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm watching for that, and we'll just look for that. And thank you guys for you guys that are sending stars on the main on the Freedom Fellowship. I appreciate that very much. 
that helps us to pay the internet bill and the software and all that. It's, it's a blessing. Yep. Amen. All right. Well, so whoever you are with your arm, if you can, you know, put your right hand on the left shoulder, or if you want, you can put your left hand under the armpit. I remember we used to play a game when I was in grade school where we'd kind of make a quacking sound doing that. You're not doing that here though. Um, and so Lord, now, whoever this person is, I just ask that now in the name of Jesus, that your spirit would come out to them and that you would touch them wherever they're sitting or standing. I ask that you would just dissolve this growth and I ask that you would make the mobility in the shoulder return to normal. Return to normal. Yes. Return to normal in Jesus' name. Receive the healing of the Lord. Yes. Amen. I'm going to agree with that. Uh, amen. I, I felt like you can list one off too. We'll list off a few. That way they can comment quickly. I felt like I, I, saw, I saw somebody with knee pain, but it's not in the front. It's in the back part of your knee in that like in the muscle area back there. It's, it's on the back side, like torn ligaments or something in there or just pain in the back uh, side of your leg in the knee area. What would you call that? The knee pit in the knee pit? <laughs> In your knee I pit. don't know what that's called. <laughs> yeah. In, we'll call it in your knee pit. You got pain in the knee pit. Okay. So if that's you, just, just respond to that as well. And we'll pray for you. We're going to pray for everybody, but we're just calling out a couple specifics. What else? You got anything else? Thank you, Jesus. Seems to me there's somebody, this is very mild. Sometimes words come to me more, more strongly and distinctly and other times less, but it seems to me there's somebody who's got a headache it's it's not on the center line. It's it's off here to the right side, and I, I it's somehow going back across your head. I, I'm I'm just the way I'm showing my fingers. That you might think it's just a line, but it may actually cover this whole side of the head, it goes down into the neck. But it, it's it's above the right eye here, and then it comes back. Who has that? Yeah, I, I'm shaking. I'm shaking my head violently because I had the same word, Somebody's the exact same word. Like, that's why I was like, yep, mm -hmm. that was if I was going to let you have a turn. And that's what I felt. So come on. Like, <laughs> I stole like that was your the, word. <laughs> yeah. So, no, no, no. That's just that's just confirmation. So we're going to see someone say that exact same thing. So right now, uh, is it is it Marcy? Marcy, you have a lump in the back of your knee <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That lump is going to disintegrate right now in the name of Jesus. No more pain in the back of your knee. That lump, Amen. it doesn't belong there. It was not Amen. formed there. It's not how God designed you. And you need to uh, go back in the name of Jesus. All that pain that's traveling in your right leg, in the name of Jesus, it must come off. Right now, in the name of Jesus, all pain, go. Spirit of infirmity, go in the name of Jesus. We're just declaring the healing oil of God to pour over your leg right now. And that back of the knee, everything must line up with heaven. So I command it to shrink, to shrink and go. By, by his stripes, you are healed in Amen. the name of Jesus. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me know. Feel it. See if it's hot. Let me know if anything's happening back there so we can pray into that. Uh, Joe said, I have that headache. I'm sure there's several ones there's that like six or seven. Look, if you guys just have headaches, even if that didn't fit you perfectly, we're going to, you know, like receive the healing of the prayer. You know, even now, if you know, we were we were talking about um, evil spirits, afflicting spirits. Many of these headaches that people have are caused by afflicting spirits. Not all of them many i want to be clear about that many not all but um it, it's far more common uh with headaches than maybe anything else and depending on the family background there can be free masonic spirits there can be stuff left over from when you were practicing some sort of occultic whatever meditation or reiki or something so there could be many sources of it but this is kind of an unusual thing. Um, a lot of times if I'm with you and I'm praying for you in person, I'll have you look me in the eye. So I, I want you to do something that's going to feel very strange. I'm going to look directly at my camera, and I want you to look directly at me. So as though we are looking eye to eye. And if you have these headaches, I'm just going to pray as though I'm looking into your eyes. I'm not because I'm looking into a camera. I can't see any of you, although out of my periphery, I can see Ren's hand being raised. But I want you to look at me as though we're looking eye to eye. I don't want you to blink if you can help it. In the name of Jesus, I speak to these afflicting spirits that are causing these headaches. And I command you to come off the head. Specifically, I break your power over the right eye and over the right side of the head and over the uh, right side of the neck. And I command everything that is attached 
on the head, over the eye, and in the neck to leave in the name of Jesus. Stop afflicting the people of God. Your time is up. Your power was broken at the cross. Go now in Jesus' name. Go, go, go. You're done in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoo. Thank okay, you, you can stop looking me in the eye now. Thank and you, check Jesus. your head. See if you're getting that nice sort of numbing sensation where the pain has left, maybe Thank cooling. Could be different ways you're experiencing that, but check to see if you're having some experience of relief. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just felt like several people were going to get healed tonight. Either that or they fell in love staring deeply into your eyes. <laughs> That's it. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Whew. I felt like some people were going to receive that healing. Your, your headache's just going to diminish. Diminish. Um, and for that lump in the back of the knee, I just feel like that's dissolving right now. I feel like there's fire on it. So let me know if you feel anything happening back there. I'd love to know. Whoo. Yes. Feels great. Thanks. Hallelujah. Come on. Finished oh, works in the name God. of Jesus. Amen. Fire feeling and pain gone. She's been complaining since the beginning of the broadcast that she got diagnosed with something going on with her eyes. And so right now in the name of Jesus, that's a finished work in the name of Jesus. Headaches gone. Very hot. Come on. Uh, warmth God. and feeling of touch. Come on. Head is numb. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Hallelujah. Uh, Nancy will claim that right there in the back of your calf in the name of Jesus, just like the back of the knee healed in the name of Jesus. All those muscles must release and tension must go receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a spirit here of healing. I mean, there's just a sovereign. The Lord is, 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 is uh, lined up with his word and we're lined up with his word. He, he always follows through with his word. His word does not return void. Elizabeth says, feel much better now. Well, Elizabeth, Praise receive the, the finished work. Receive the finished work. Come on, Jesus. Come on. There's nothing better than seeing Jesus heal some people. Woo. Thank so you. So good. So good. Every spirit of infirmity, you have to flee at the sound of the name of Jesus, of Yeshua Jesus, that, that his name is above every other name and you have no more hold on people in the name of Jesus. You have no more authority on anybody on this broadcast, any sickness, any disease. You have no right or access to them. I break that hold in the name of Jesus and I declare right now that your bodies are free to line up with heaven in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, there's a lot of lumps. I, I, look, if you have a lump, do me a favor. Put your hand on your lump. Uh, put your <laughs> hand on your lump real quick, wherever that lump is. Okay? I'm not saying if you're lumpy, if you have a, a, a medical <laughs> condition, all right? <laughs> We've all been in quarantine. We all are a little extra lumpy right now, okay? So, But uh, if you have a medical condition, there's a lump on you, just go ahead and put your hand on that right now. I'm going to call – I speak to that right now. The fire of God is going to come and dissolve that lump. There's going to be such a heat that you're even going to sweat right now, uh, right now, a hernia, a lump, something that should not be there. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that it's going to be healed. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I declare it's healed, it's whole, and it's going to go right now. Your body's going to restore back to its rightful condition right now. Healing oil, the, the blood of Jesus is flowing through every bit of your body there, and healing is coming. The fire of God is coming to burn away all infirmity and sickness, and the enemy's plans to still kill and destroy are defeated in the name of Jesus. Burn up Amen. at the cross in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yeah. Lumps must go right now. Lumps must go. Go. I command them to shrink and die. Shrink and die. I don't care if it's a tumor. I don't care what the lump is. It must shrink and die right now in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Whew. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't care if you have a, a one or 50 or a hundred. They must go right now in the name of Jesus. They're coming off you. Some of you might just see them fall off you in the name of Jesus. It must come off you in the name of Jesus. Creative miracles and it must go. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. As soon as you said Sweat. My forehead started heat heating up. That's what he was saying. And sweating in the Great. name of Jesus. That's coming off Isaac right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. You're healed. That thing's going to dissolve right in front of you. You're going to feel it. Like some of you are going to feel it right now. Whew. Like you're literally going to have your hand on it. And it's just going to start to go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The fire of God's going to burn that thing away. It's just going to go. It's good. He's good, man. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Whew. Come on. So any any healing? I mean, we can just lean into a basic healing for everyone if you want, whatever you're feeling. 
Thank you, Jesus. Half the fun is reading the the, the testimonies. I know it's interesting. Yeah, I don't it's like to miss them. Up. I don't like to miss them. I don't know if you guys like to. You know, that's why I try to post them. That's why I always tell you guys after the broadcast if something happens, if you got healed, don't just expect that I saw it on the broadcast. Send me a message. Send me a message. Oh my gosh, left ear has been bugging me for five months and eased it. Wow, no more pain, Jared. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Jared comes on our broadcast and paints prophetically while we, while we, uh, he was, he was asking if he was coming on tonight, but since I had you, I didn't bring Jared on, but he's an amazing painter that paints live on the broadcast in the atmosphere. And it's exceptional, man. That's, that's amazing. Jared in the name of Jesus finished work. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. See, this is why you got to share guys. Hold on. Where'd it go? Too many. Oh shoot. Too many comments. Hang on. I can uh, uh, well, this one, that's not what I want to show you. I feel, I can't feel left uh, under the armpit. There, there it is go. right there. There it is right there. Watch this. Isaac. Praise God. It has shrunk almost gone. Look, I, I don't, you could say, Hey, I'm praying for your headache and you get like an adrenaline rush and you can't feel the feeling. All right. Yes. Listen to me. There, there's, there's a euphoric feeling when you get a little bit of an adrenaline, you know, a little bit of a, like when you work out, you get those euphoric, uh, uh, chemicals going and, and sometimes you can deceive yourself into thinking, Oh, I don't think my head hurts as much anymore, but you can't make a lump go away. You can't make a lump go away. So on my, on my pastor Ren Shuffman, Maxine Jones just said my lump just disappeared. Thank you, Jesus. Maxine, make sure you send me a private message of that so I can hear that. Come on, lumps are dissolving. So look, some some of you didn't get that healing. I just felt like the Lord said this to me. Now, put your hand on it again. And this time, now that you've seen other people get healed, then go ahead and step out and know that it's your turn. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every last lump that has not been healed, be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, dissolve and go. The fire of God come and burn away every lump. Burn away every lump. Jared, right now, burn away every lump on your ear. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now, it must go. Keep your hand on it and just receive it. Your hand is just there as a holder for my hand. So right now, in the name of Jesus, every lump go. Father, thank you for healing. Thank you that you're taking away every lump and lining their bodies back up with heaven. Thank you for loving your sons Amen. and your daughters. Amen. We release the full Amen. love of God on them. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Think about that. If you've got lumps that are going away, either one of two things is happening. Either it was filled up with, I don't know, pus or fluid or something, and it's draining, and your body will eliminate all that, or it's a miracle, and it's just vanishing. I mean, those are your only two explanations. Yeah. It's all happening because we're praying. Yeah, come on. Come on, Jesus. So let's see. Let's see if we got any others here. Woo Thank you, Jesus. It's hot and rushing chills throughout my body. Look, I'm just like right now, uh, 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 we don't have to pray for your condition. You're just going to get healed. Right now, you're healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, some of you right now, your faith just made you whole. Like you're just healed in the name of Jesus. Test out whatever's wrong with you. I don't need to call out your ailment. It's healed. Some of you are going to write and say, oh my gosh, this just like the pain just quit or something's functioning. A leg's going to grow out like right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's so good. Thank you, Lord. Wow. You know, it's so funny. I tell people this all the time. We get off these broadcasts and I see healings happen and I can't, I can't sit still. I'm so excited. And then I, I realize, <laughs> I realize how much I've surrendered to God because why in the world am I excited about God loving on one of his other children? I didn't get no healing, but I got to witness God loving his children. And to me, that's the greatest joy. That's the coolest thing in the world to see God love on his children it has nothing to do with Ken or I. It has to do with us just saying, Hey, uh, children, meet your dad. Amen. And just being a part of seeing that miracle happen is enough for us. Okay. Hallelujah. Diabetes is going to go. Some Somebody on here, you're like something just happened. I feel like, like you almost got a little dizzy or something happened where you felt like your blood sugars just changed. I think somebody that has diabetes, your blood sugars just drop back down to normal suddenly. 
somebody. What, what is this? Uh, Hallelujah. Normal A. <laughs> Come on. That it's going to happen right now in the name of Jesus. I saw somebody take off their glasses and rub their eyes. Like something's happening with your eyes so you can see. Uh, well, okay. My right eye feels less clogged, but, but left still feels clogged. Oil glands clogged. Clear out in the name of Jesus. Come on right now. Nicole, you already received some healing. Receive it all. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, come on. Bumps are going. Lumps are going. Bumps, lumps. There needs to be a third one. I don't have it yet. Bumps, lumps, and humps must go in the name of Jesus. There it is. <laughs> bumps, lumps, and humps. I had to make it a preacher, preacher style. <laughs> bumps, lumps, and humps all must go in the name of Jesus. I don't care what they are. Uh, hallelujah. Man, you guys are like healing's happening tonight. What else do we got over here? Let me look. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I felt pressure on my face and I can't stop crying. Come on. You're getting healed in the name of Jesus. Is it is it Lupe or Lupe? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whew. I, I want to see whose eyes are better. Like I just felt like it happened in the name of Jesus. Come on. Receive total healing. The joy of the Lord is yours. It's over you. It's flowing on you. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that the, the, Lord, the joy of the Lord is okay. Bumps, lumps, humps, and the chumps got to go. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Lord, just bring everyone into healing right now in the name of Jesus. Do you have any other, uh, anything else hitting you for an ailment or anything like that? You know, this is a strange word. I've been sitting on it and I'm not, again, not 100% sure that it's right, but I'm leaning to positive, so I'm going to throw it out here. I think someone's got something wrong with their tongue, but I don't know what the condition is, but it's it seems to be on the right side of the tongue more than the left, and it goes mostly back towards where the tongue is rooted into the throat. So it's not so much on the tip here, but further back, but right side. I'm pointing at my left side though. So it should be, no, wait a minute. I think I got it reversed. I, yeah, it's I, the left side. Sorry, I'm doing this wrong because I'm looking at the screen and it's throwing me off. It's the left side of your tongue, more towards the back than the tip, but the left side, you know, going back maybe down even into the part where the tongue's attached down here in the throat. Is there anybody who has a tongue condition on this on this broadcast? Several people on here that don't know how to control their tongue. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, deliver. <laughs> well, that's its own issue, isn't it? I do. Okay, so Rachel, she uh, I can't show her comment because she's on my Pastor Ren Shuffman, so it's not popping up on the where I can throw it on here. But Rachel Chapman says I do. She has a tongue condition. Okay. So can you can you lean into that, Rachel? Like explain, like is it what he said. Okay, so I'm sure she'll answer in just a second. Marcy said the lump on her is smaller on the back of the leg, but it's still there. Shrink and die. Finished work in the name of Jesus. Receive the fullness of your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, she says, "I okay, I do." It's on the left side of the tongue. I was about to tell you that's why I stopped doing right side, left side a lot of times because. It gets confusing being reversed and the camera being reversed. Yeah, that's it's right. Really, yep. It's like double reverse. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so she said on the left side, she has a tongue condition on, but one side. That's exactly it. Yeah. She has a condition on her tongue on one side. That's very specific. We don't have 10,000 people on here for something like that. It's like, of course, you're going to get somebody. All right. So, but oh, 4,000 tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> she said, I'm not, uh, she said, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm very worried about it. Yeah. So go ahead, lean into that. All right. So we're going to pray for that tongue. And then Tanya McCling, uh, is talking about her yeah. niece who bites her tongue. They're raising her. So we'll pray for the biting of the tongue as well. Yeah. All right. So, uh, who's the woman that has the condition that matches it's what I said? Rachel Chapman. All right, Rachel. That's easy to remember. We got, we got a Rachel on the set, don't we? Yep. <laughs> All right. So we got Rachel and Tanya uh, and anyone else who's joining in. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for 
uh, this word of knowledge. And we ask in the name of Jesus that just as you shrunk uh, the lump in the in the armpit, we just see Sammy's testimony as we're praying this. Lord, we, just as you've done that, we ask you now to touch the tongue. And we ask you to touch this child who bites her tongue. And uh, Lord, whatever that's giving rise to this, if it's a spirit, loose her from the spirit. Lord, if it's uh, if it's just that she's nervous, then Lord, calm her and give her your peace. But whichever way it's necessary, we ask that the tongue biting would stop. And we ask you for Rachel and her condition uh, that goes back there on the left side. Right now. Now, this is funny. Just as I said that, I felt a sensation in my tongue that wasn't there. So I think I'm getting what, what I call a sympathy Ooh. word of knowledge. Yeah. And so, Lord, I just want to pray specifically into this situation in Rachel's mouth. And I speak to this condition and I command any growth. I command any tumor. I command anything that is here that is unnatural to wither and die and pass out of the system. Just go in the name of Jesus because there is healing for this. And I thank you that he died in order that we can secure this healing, this blessing of healing. Bring it on, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us know if anything's happening there, Rachel or Tanya, and let me know some, if you feel any sensation that we can lean into. Amen. We just receive that in the name of Jesus. And I just feel like some of you guys just test out your stuff, man. Test out what's going on with your body and see if like while we've been talking, look, there's just an atmosphere of healing. Like you just walk into it and there's a healing. It's kind of like the pool at Bethsaida. You know, it's like it didn't matter the ailment. You didn't have to call it out. You just had to step into it. So there's like an atmosphere right here of healing and just being in it. There's there's healing that happens in, in, in this atmosphere of healing. All right. That's um, yeah, that's just what happens when the Holy Spirit drops. He drops. He comes in and there's just an atmospheric change, a glory change in the environment. And you're, we're, we're experiencing that right now. So some of you right now are just things we haven't even listed or just you're going to realize like, hey, hold on a second. My neck isn't stiff. You know, uh, uh, you're going to realize that. So just check it out. Don't don't just sit there. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um yeah, she, she's thanking us right now, but she hasn't replied yet if there's been any shift. In the name of Jesus, every lump and bump in her mouth and her tongue right now go in the name of Jesus. Um, Veronica, it has to die. It has to go. Like, I felt that very strongly tonight, that lump's got to go. In the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, so, we just ask you to touch Veronica. And Lord, thank you for her faith that she just let it be known that she still has this problem. Now we just speak to the lump in the name of Jesus and as though you are a mountain, be cast into the sea. Leave Veronica's body, go now. Do not remain in her body. Take your pain and your physical presence both and depart in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. Can you pray for Jessica Martin here too? Holy Spirit, drop on me and heal me. Do we know what it's for? Uh, she's, she's had, I know she's had some serious stuff going on. I don't know that she's hundred percent sure what it is yet. Okay. So Lord, we just lift up Jessica to you. We thank you for this woman, uh, that you brought her into this world for this time, but Lord, she needs her health to be able to function well and to serve you as you intended. And so I ask you in Jesus name for healing to descend over her body. Holy spirit, just come down upon Jessica Martin, even right now and let your power go through the body and let divine virtue bring her back to the place of perfect balanced health that she can go forth and serve you as you intended for her to do in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Guys, man, I got to tell you, you got to be a part of the uh, Oklahoma supernatural intensive. We're, we're going to have all these people I've been having on here, uh, you know, have been flowing in the anointing of God and, and, and just releasing their giftings and they're going to be, they're all going to be here for the week uh, fifth through the 11th. And, and we're going to, we're going to see a lot more of this, just crazy amounts of this happening. Cause God wants to heal his children. He wants to bless his children. He wants his children raised up in authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking to see what else we have here. Oh, thank you. Thank you right now, Michelle, the sickness has to end right now in the name of Jesus. So we just call it done right now restore your health right now in the name of Jesus, just energy and strength come back into your body right now. Uh, energy and strength come back into your body right now. And I just release that the Holy spirit all over you. 
to restore your strength, to restore your peace right now. In, in Jesus name, receive that. In Jesus name, receive that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There you go, Deborah. I just put it up for you. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo, this is good tonight. A lot of healing happening tonight. Guys, yeah. you know, every night's totally different. Sometimes it's teaching, uh, you know, it's a lot of prophecy, a lot of healing. Like there's always a different atmosphere. God God's uh, uh, does a new thing. There's always new wine being poured out on here. The atmosphere here is just contagious. And that's why it's so important to be a part of that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we just declare that everybody is healed and whole. Guys, we're kind of running out of time here, but we just receive healing. You know, we're just speaking life over you guys and life more abundantly. Uh, you know, I, I want to see all of you healed. I want to see all of you whole. That's what we're looking for, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We, we, I love it. I love seeing that. Look, God has not forsaken you, nor has he abandoned you. He has never abandoned you. He is not in the abandoning business. That's not what he does. He sees you and he wants to touch you and love you. Amen. You are welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Anything else you want to, you, you ready to wrap her up? It's your think, show, man. Huh? I, I think that, well, you know what? I do have one last word. Go for this it. This is for bladders. And I think there, I think there are both men and women who have had bladder uh, infections and UTIs. But in particular, I think there's a man on this show. You're probably a little bit, well, you're moving towards elderly, even if you're not there yet. And we might call your condition urgent bladder. When it when it's time, it's like right now. And the Lord wants to touch all of these bladders and urinary tract conditions. Come on. So Lord, I just thank you for the people that are on, that are listening to me right now and listening to Ren and listening to Rachel. And I ask in your name that you would release healing over the bladders and over the kidneys over urgent bladder in particular, that it would simply go away, that it would be like a young man uh, who can seemingly go and go and go for hours without having to run to the restroom. And Lord, for these women who have recurrent UTIs that they can't even figure out where they're coming from or why they have them, Lord, I just ask that you would break the back of these things over them. I pray ask that you would break the back of all that has been brought against them. All right, angel. We just speak to your UTIs in particular because I saw your name earlier on the broadcast, and I know you've had uh, I know you've had other challenges. So in Jesus' name, we just speak to your uh, bladder and to your urinary tract, and we command healing come down over the body now. Jesus. And Deborah, your overactive bladder OAB is what the medical community calls it from the lower back nerve damage. Father, just would you touch this nerve damage and fix it? Because, Lord, we know that if Jesus were there right now, he would just extend his finger. He would touch her in the lower back, and boom, the nerve damage would be fixed. And here we are, Lord. We are two or more. We've got three of us who are broadcasting. We've got uh, Deborah. We've got others who are on the broadcast. And so we come together, as your word says, two or more, and we ask that you would just touch Deborah now in Jesus' name and let the OAB be healed. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So just every other um, assignment on here of the enemy, every sickness, everything you're dealing with, everything that's in your body from pain to cancer, we just reject its assignment over your life right now. We release the healing power of God over you. Just receive this right now. If you have to put your phone down, put your hands up real quick and just put your hands out to receive this, okay? In the name of Jesus, I just release the healing power of God to pour over you in a palpable manifested way right now that you see the healing manifestation of God over you, that you are being restored to your heavenly positioned body, that right now it's being given back to you, body parts, pain going, uh, sickness leaving. In the name of Jesus, every ailment that does not line up with heaven, that is not an assignment from heaven, must leave in the name of Jesus and only heaven may remain. So right now we declare you are, are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. 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 Thank you. Lord. 
Guys, lean into this a little bit more. Ken Fish, again, like I said, will be with us for the Oklahoma Supernatural Intensive.com. You, if you can't make it in person, which I highly recommend, you can stream it. There's a streaming option on there. Just go on there, click it, learn more about it, get the streaming option so you can at least be part. It'll be a one week intensive, all from Sunday night to Saturday, uh, all day long and into the night. Like we're going to cram it. This is going to be crazy. There's 12 powerful speakers. I mean, all the way from Robbie Dawkins to Ken Fish. We got uh, Joanne Moody that's coming and, and Brian Blount. Chris Reed's going to be there. I mean, you're talking about, I, I, uh, I don't know how many of them that are coming have actually been on Sid Roth's at Supernatural, but I stopped counting. Like, it's just like, this is an all-star team of people that have the glory of God uh, in their life and they know how to release it on you and equip you to walk in it. It's not just that they can come and pray over you and you can say, oh, wow, they're so powerful. Their heart is to give it away to see you walk in it. And so the whole point of the conference is going to be teaching you to give it away the same way we gave it away tonight. Amen. The same way we gave it away tonight. Amen. All right. So be a part of that. Come be a part of that. And remember, you know, we have the a partners program. Look into uh, Ken's ministry. Can you tell them the website real quick? I know I listed orbitministries.org. Orbitministries.org. I think I have it listed there, but but we'll make sure. Orbis Ministries.org. Yep. Orbis. And if people want to check out my uh, my school for training in how to pray effectively for healing, uh, they can go to orbissm.com. Different okay. different site altogether. That's right, right? Orbit Orbisministries.org, right there. Yep. Orbisministries.org. Yeah. Check out Ken Fish and what he's doing, and and, and the powerful man of God. You know, uh, uh, not just powerful in his anointing, but a brilliant mind theologian, you know, just, just a, a really wonderful all around guy who wants to see your lives uh, changed by equipping you. So look into that. He's got a whole schooling program himself. So be a part of what we're doing, join in what we're doing. And remember, if you guys are interested in our partners program, I'm going to send you Dale Mass book for free. If you uh, want to be a partner with us and help us to accomplish what we're doing here. So look into our partners program right there. And David perceived he was king. Go check out uh, Ken's ministry there. So into his ministry, be a part of what he's doing to teach and equip people around the world. Uh, yeah, that's right. Powerful teaching at Orbis school. So be a part of what he's doing. This guy, look, he knows what he's talking about. All right. You know, he's not just running around loosey goosey, throwing out some stuff that he knows what he's talking about. And he's and he's seen the fruit of what he says. OK. And so be a part of what he's doing. So follow him and make sure his ministry is powerful. So be a part of that. And hey, guys, I'm, I'm glad that you guys all could join us tomorrow night. Remember, Dale Mass will be with us prophesying over you. And if you've seen him, he is a shotgun prophet. Like he'll just go prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. And in fact, just me saying, hey, guys, share out the broadcast. He's like, OK, that's fine. But I, I could have got one more prophecy in there. So he is. <laughs> so if you if you've been needing a word from God or you want a word from God, Dale Mast is the shot. Everyone calls him a shotgun prophet now just because he's. He just, he just goes down the list. He doesn't skip anybody. He's not, he just has a word for everybody. It's just incredible. So be a part of that tomorrow night and you're going to get radically blessed uh, by that. And Hey guys, just remember something. Uh, if I don't see you between now and tomorrow, I love you. God loves you. Shalom.